And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, and what I'm going to talk about today, we're doing something very important, very cool today. We're going to have a live Zoom coaching session for all the people in our Discord at 12 o'clock Pacific time. Pending the uh, Russia invasion at 11.20 Pacific time, <laughs> stay away from your devices. I don't know what rumor I heard, but uh, it's probably just a bunch of baloney, 5G radiation, something or another. But <clears throat> you know, Klaus Schwab and the, the lizard people over in uh, the WEF have been talking about cyber attacks and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm sure they're going to come at some point today, probably not going to be the day, but let uh, I'm going to talk to you about Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, BSV, which took a 25% pump, uh, I think it was Monday or over the weekend, and why I think it's going to retrace and do what's called the full retrace, all the way back down to where they started this pump. There's no reason some kind of coin called Bitcoin Satoshi's vision should be pumping this hard amid Bitcoin already putting in a full retrace. So we'll go into that. I had a lot of questions yesterday about that in the Discord, and I'm going to talk about why I'm layering in my short positions, where my risk management is, etc. But first things first, um, check out the Discord. Yesterday we killed it. Shorting this BSV token, Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, uh, 120%, 43%, and 96%. This is a bit of an oddity, typically, and you're going to get some losers for sure. But we're looking, you know, scalp trades, 5 6 7%, that kind of thing. Um, it's all in the Discord. The link is in the description below. And I... And it wasn't working yesterday. So if you tried to get in yesterday using that link, it didn't work. Today, it's going to work. All right, jumping into what we're going to talk about, the main events here today. The main events, we're talking about Bitcoin, traditional markets, so NASDAQ, S&P. We're going to take a look at the Dixie and the harbinger of death and despair or peace and prosperity. And I'm going to start it off actually with Dixie and Despite all the guys on the interwebs that I respect and think they have like probably more market knowledge than me, you know, Gareth Soloway, Eric Crown, um, the guys over at Crypto Banter, they all seem to think the dollar's in a pullback right now. Why? Well, and you know, I could totally be wrong here, but I don't know. I think uh, 12 weeks of straight up right? We're hitting the not 0.5 and that was our target. But in fact, um, I've been saying, Hey, we're probably going to hit the middle of this box, maybe the top side of the box. And that's because everybody's expecting the dollar to go down right now. Why would the dollar go down when the economic news coming out continues to be bullish for the dollar? Check out my FX book, go to the economic calendar right here. Important. You know, somebody asked me, what's the day in the life of the trader? Well, you're jumping in the markets. You're looking at the economic data. You're looking at the price action all across the market, stocks, bonds, crypto, economic data. This is one of my favorite tools to use. You look at the high economic data points. So S&P Global Services PMI did come out bearish for the dollar, but just slightly lower and higher than last month. But you can see the... Uh, the other ones right here, we're all bullish. The green, so it's the previous month or year, the consensus, what is the expectation versus the actual, right? And it's, you know, a whole skill set in itself interpreting economic data. But essentially, an easy way to gear it is if you get green, that means bullish for the dollar. If you get red, that means bearish. So ADP, unemployment change, did come out much lower than expected. This came out lower than expected. That was the expectation, 153,000, 89,000. So all around bearish for the dollar. But then you had uh, factory orders way up. You had uh, S&P Glo Global Composite PMI, whatever that is, came out higher uh, than expectations, bullish for the dollar. 
And lastly, this one came out, even ISM services PMI. I just wanna see if we have anything big tomorrow. Really quick, while we are in here, balance of trade, imports, exports, jobless claims tomorrow. So high economic impact right there. You just wanna look at the American flag. Those are the high economic impact events typically. And <clears throat> yes, so back onto Dixie and why we think, hey, we're probably gonna come into the middle of the box at least. Well, not 0.5618. That's on a weekly retracement basis again. And we've been calling it ever since the breakout. Wow, look at that potential for the dollar to massively rise, but uh, we'll get into that on another more macro, uh, macro analysis here. But uh, hidden bullish divergence. I mean, three drives gets you a shot to the top side of the range. And we did say that, that, you know, this could be the mid range. This would be the top side of the range, guys. Uh, that's when price is making higher lows and the RSI is making a lower lows. Hidden bullish divergence. Again, if you're part of the uh, part of the VIP coaching sessions, you're going to figure out what that means. Um, needless to say, if we do a measure move off of this descending triangle. You take it from the 50%, where does that line up with? Well, right about the middle, right about that wick where I imagine a lot of the stop losses are in. Guys, I think it could it it could go higher. It could go higher, but I'm expecting at least a little bit more on this guy. And the daily is just marching it up the wall of worry on that nine exponential. So dollar up, risk assets down. NASDAQ picking up a bit of a bounce off of this area has not completely filled the gap yet. Needs to come down a little bit lower. And with this big bearish candle, a lower high and a silver cross to the downside, I imagine this is just a bit of a um, uh, backfill, right? So again, using our Fibonacci tool here, you can see the bear traps and the bull traps, where do they come in? The 0.5 and the 6.18. We are right there right now. So on the daily time frame, if I was uh, gonna take a short position on NASDAQ, well, easy way to manage the risk. Actually, in fact, a pretty good um, entry, I would say. You know, off the green 55 at 14.909, the stop loss right above the prior wick high. This is the M formation raft that I was talking about yesterday. Uh, perfect M formation and conservative guys enter on the second. All right, so let me let me draw it out for you. This is a reversal uh, reversal formation, and you could have see, saw one here. Uh, where are my trading tools? So M formation. Okay, we get a M second peak entry. You know, not not the best one, but um, confirmation closing below the middle wick. Boom. Lower high. Okay, that's your conservative entry. Where do you target a move? Actually, just down to here um, would have been my target. And, well, you know, alongside some other indicators, you could have been targeting that green box of peace and prosperity. So above the box, good for NASDAQ. Below the box, bad. And what I don't like to see is that, well, what's happened on the S&P? We've already shot through the box. The Dow Jones already completed the M. I mean, it's likely going to come down a bit more. And, oh, look at the VIX. The VIX going up. VIX goes up. Risk assets go down, typically. Uh, Dixie, again, bullish bias, still looking for some upside on this one. Just maybe a couple more tries. Uh, as everybody's bearish on Dixie, I could be wrong. And where does the invalidation take place? Well, um, you know, as long as we're above the green 55, uh, you know, higher lows in the making. And essentially, uh, you know, remaining bullish on this one as long as, and this is a bearish retracement. A nice little bearish retracement that is from the low to the high on a candle body closing basis. And I will just draw another little box here. 
So as long as we're above the box, you got the golden cross to the upside on the daily. Um, you know, gonna gonna remain bullish on Dixie, and um, if you know, October shapes up to be the the October we're expecting it to be. Because again, we're long term bullish on Bitcoin. We're looking for some major buying opportunities as the price comes down. Um, deviation above the range, and then boom, wicks everybody out. And that's probably, you know, if I had to guess, something like that. And as the dollar capitulates, goes down like that, that's where we should see Bitcoin and traditional assets lift off. Now, if dollar keeps on going up to here, guys, Risk assets are probably not going to do so well, and that's why it's very important you uh, practice risk management. All right, let's take a look at tether dominance. Tether dominance, bit of a snake eyes right there, those bright green, that's a bit of a reversal formation. As tether dominance goes up, your altcoins get shafted. Your altcoins take it they, they, they're not going to enjoy uh, any, any pleasures. So we've been talking about this as well. We don't want to see a daily closure back above this pivot right here. Um, I could probably adjust that slightly, you know, give or take a few, but this thing is in an uptrend. Higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows, higher highs. And could you call that a higher low? Uh, you know, Maybe not, maybe, maybe not. Uh, that's a higher low. Anyways, needless to say, if we look at momentum on this one, we are just beginning to cross up. I am looking for a little bit more upside on that and that does help us out for the short positions we are holding in some of the altcoins. What else do I wanna, all right. I think uh, Dixie and let's get into what everybody's here for Bitcoin price action and I uh, hate to pat myself on the back yesterday, but we did talk about this. We did talk about this. I think I said 27.175 or 27.2 yesterday when price action was up here or yeah, yep. Uh, we don't want to see a closure back below that box. And I guess it's time to get rid of the previous weekend trap box. And uh, yeah, Bitcoin's been quite a beast to trade, quite volatile, quite difficult. And um, as you can see, you know, what am I talking about here? What am I talking about? One is a bit of a weak bounce. Very, very weak bounce so far. So good. Yeah. So to be fair, I am looking for a bounce uh, before perhaps. No, I, I mean, as long as we're below this high right here, that's the M formation. That is a perfect M. Reversal. What does the M look like? It looks like this. How do you complete the M? This is on a 15 minute time frame, by the way. So boom, boom. Yeah, it could go for some more. Uh, M formation. What am I looking for right here? Boom, boom. Enter on the second peak. You are tar I'm the more aggressive guy, so I am entering, you know, somewhere around here. Uh, that's a complete M. Looking for another lower high and maybe we fill out these wicks. Um, we fill out the wicks, as I imagine uh, that, you know, the wicks like to get filled. You see these wicks, they got filled. See these wicks, they got filled, 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 have not been filled yet. And the full retrace, which we're gonna about to go over on Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, whatever that scam sounds like, um, <clears throat> I, I mean, who knows? That, that could be Satoshi. But uh, the full retrace is going to come all the way down to this little guy right here, this high volume little 
reversal candle right here. It's either a hangman or it's a shooting star. In this case, a bit of a shooting star and this bright pink, uh, bright pink candle. Let's see on the hourly what we got. Any, any, any kind of high value vector candles. That's what they call them. I, I, you know, don't ask me why, don't ask me why, but uh, looks like we are gonna droop down a little bit more and fill out the wick, pop off the purple 200 for a bounce. Uh, you also got that silver cross, uh, 21 cross in the green 55 to the downside. Let's check out volatility is beginning to wane, but it, as it expanded, you expect what? Price to go in the direction of the stochastic, that's our momentum indicator, that, that guy right there and potential bounce uh, forming. So, uh, you know, pending, you know, no electronic devices uh, blow up at 11.20 a.m., <laughs> then uh, you should be, you know, maybe looking for a bounce. But um, the major buying opportunity we talked about on the four-hour time frame yesterday, actually, uh, I believe we were talking about the daily was, uh, let's see, we just said we want to maintain the daily uptrend. So anywhere, and I said, look, is it okay to wick down here? As long as we get a nice little wick, this, this could be the perfect October, guys. This is where, you know, uh, I'll be layering in some, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Things could get rough, uh, given, you know, the political environment we are in right now. But Bitcoin will remain strong. Bitcoin is like stronger than politics. Bitcoin is going to put the power back in the people, right? This is literally own your own money. Don't, don't uh, give it all to the bank. So we did say, hey, maybe wicks down, fills out this wick right here, and then shoots up. So that's a sloppy drawing. Wicks down, boom, puts in a higher low, and that would look good for, you know, what I would consider some massive upside potentials. And what else do I want to check in on? Um, only time will tell, guys. Only time will tell. Uh, that is a bit of a reversal candle. Uh, let's see here. If you guys do want to jump on the call, the link for the Zoom is going to be in the bottom. Okay? It's free. It's not going to be free forever, so you better jump on in there when you can. Um, say hello. Give us a shout out. And, um, yeah. All right. Next thing up. Next thing up. Bitcoin, that's the weekly trend line. That's the weekly trend line. We really want to see that trend line hold on the daily and the weekly, you know. So Bitcoin, as the dollar goes up, again, pressure is onto the downside. And then let's look at our bias buster is this guy right here, the momentum indicator. And will, well, is crossed down at the moment. We'll cross up above 27.6. So we need to get some bullish news for, or bearish news for the dollar. Bullish for, so yeah, pre, just, you know, closing back above this wick is going to create a higher low in my book and uh, could lead to some upside continuation right from where we're at right now. Volatility is expanding. And you can expect 20% moves um, as we flip flopped around here. You know, we're not coming off the lows again. Perfect example of volatility expansion as momentum crossed to the downside. Um, right there, right here. So low volatility, right? Oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Well, when volatility expands, you're going to expect the price to go in the direction of the trend. That is the stochastic, right? And there is also a link below if you want to set up trading view and learn, like have the same chart, links right and below. Um, trying to put all the tools in there. You, got, you can DM or comment below if you have a question. Happy to answer them. All right, Ethereum. What do you know, Ethereum... 
Oh yeah. Uh, so back to my, my point here with uh, Bitcoin really quick. So Bitcoin's already done the full retrace guys on the weekend price action. No, my market sessions are gone. Let's get it back up there. Let's put it back up, up and away, up and away. So what am I talking? Oh, the full retrace actually is going to come back to this pivot. So this pivot right here. Okay. So futures markets are another indicator market sessions. Check that out. You type it into um, your indicators there and you just type in market sessions. It's this one right here, 959 likes. You'll see when the futures market close and it works on the 15 minute time frame. So Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, um, whatever time it is, three o'clock, I think it's three o'clock Pacific time, maybe two o'clock. The hours just change. It's getting darker earlier, brighter earlier. Means people like me get to get up earlier and see some sunshine. However, it means I will be leaving the office when it's dark, which I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind working, guys. I don't mind working, working, working because I love it. Uh, we got the weekend trap box. So what happens over the weekend? People get trapped in bad trades. And that's why, you know, as tempting as it is, you don't have to FOMO in on the weekend, which if you're skilled enough to do it, great. I'm not personally, I, I, I know, you know, I've had some luck on the weekend, but mostly the time, no. So Bitcoin weekend price action pumps from, so the markets close, it opens on Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, give or take an hour. And <clears throat> what happens? 6% rally, call it 5.8, 7%. And what happens is a lot of times you do what's called the full retrace. These moves are just fake pumps. There's low liquidity in the market still. So the market makers can drive this thing up or down with, you know, a few billion dollars or whatever they have. George Soros is probably just man manipulating the stink off of this uh, market right now. And we need more of you retailers to come back. So then we can go full bull, the full bull. Fully bullish, Ped and uh, Grandfar. You know what I'm talking about. We want to go fully bullish, and um, we're not quite there yet. But I do suspect great opportunities coming. Great, great, great opportunities. So the full M, uh, the people that went long here, long here, you know, perhaps long here, putting their stops below the prior wicks right here. So what does the market maker do? Well, when price is up here and you're going 100X long, 20X long, 5X long, I don't care what it is. On the opposite side of that trade are shorts building, right? So the market maker has to take your trade. They don't have to, but they're taking your trade because they know what are they going to do? They're going to slam it right in your face. And... There's shorts right here, right? These wicks right here where people are getting stopped out. Uh, the shorts are being accumulated. Shorts, short. The market maker is taking shorts if you're taking longs. It's just how it works. For every long, there's a short on the other side, okay? So they're taking shorts and that's why the full retrace happens. The full retrace again, is going to be down, down here, a little bit lower from where we're at today at 27,000 bucks. And could we get a wake lower? Yes. But that's kind of, you know, general target for me. Again, not financial advice. And if we do do this and we close any kind of even a four hour closure back above 28,131 or more specifically back above the 618 Fib. Yeah, coming in right here at 28,057 bucks. That's gonna look bullish. That's going to kind of invalidate the move. And I would expect kind of the trend line to hold and uh, onwards and upwards from there. 
So if you are bullish, what you want to see is this. You want to see ping, pong, high or low, and boom, something like that. You know, just holding this trend line to the upside and kind of that next target at 29.5 if we do break on out. Uh, 29.5, second target is going to be 31,000. So odd numbers to keep in mind. And that's it for Bitcoin. Jump on the Zoom call out. <laughs> Friends, family, anybody who watches. By the way, good. Guys, we just hit 2,600 subscribers. That's pretty cool. So like and subscribe to the channel. Get the updates. We post all kinds of funny videos, things, um, all crypto related, some political related. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a blessed and highly favored day, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.